Now that's fine. That's how we represent the vectors. Now how do I add two vectors in 3D? Okay, the the method remains the same. But but as you all will understand, or all even in 2D, say say let us say this is another vector. Okay, this is vector B. And as as we did it here, this vector B can also be represented as the sum of three components, right? Again, make the same box and and kind of measure the length and see the directions and and and, and do do whatever we did earlier. So I'm straight away writing the result that that is let us say B X I cap B X can be positive or negative. Here to A X in this case A X A Y A Z were positive it could have been negative right all of them or either of them could have been negative depending on the orientation of these vectors okay so so it is let us say let us say expressed as bx i cap plus b y j cap plus plus b z i'm sorry plus 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 B Z K cap, right? Fine. Now, what if they are to be added? One of the one of the methods that we know is obviously you take this this B vector, shift it, put it, put it, put it parallel to this, right? So, so let us say uh, this is my vector. So, so I I I shift it parallel to itself bring it here right bring it here okay this is my b vector okay bring it here at the head of 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 a right and and your resultant will come out to be this the tail of the first to the head of the last now as as you you could have seen it making these boxes is a hell lot of a job right and then adding them is another chaos how do i know now the, the i i call this resultant vector as r vector how do i know the respective x y and z components of this green vector understand how do i know that so so let us try to understand if if this had a box right whose whose x axis length was bx right bx and y axis length was by and, and z axis length was bz then then what do you do when you shift this along with it the whole box also gets shifted no no let let me kind of show that to you so you have you have sort of the the same thing okay let me just copy it let me copy it and and let me paste it okay now what happens now what happens these are identical things right so when we shift things you will understand right it was getting too crowded in that so that's why i have i've made another copy of it and now now i'll do this so what i'll do is i'll i'll erase the box of the earlier vector right along with the earlier vector that is the red vector i'll i'll get rid of fine and all the associated associated component vectors I, i'll get rid of that fine i do not want this red vector why because now i am dealing with the with the purple vector right so so this is also gone they are gone 
So let us quickly erase that. Let us quickly erase that. Right? I also do not want any of these, right? They are not required for me. I am only concerned with this this purple vector B. Right? I am also not technically concerned with this yellow vector, right? So let it go. We'll rebuild this x axis. Okay, let it go and let's come back here. Let's come back here. Let's let's rebuild this. Okay. Okay, let's rebuild this x axis. Okay, fine. Now with this, I I'll have to make another box, right? So so I'll have to drop it say somewhere like that, and then start making that box. Fine. So so let us say this box is. And how do I make that box? I have to make lines parallel to only the x, y, and z axis. Fine. So I do that very quickly. It is this? Okay this goes up like that and this gets connected with this like that and, and this goes and connects with this and this and connection like that. Correct? This is the box. Now what happens if I am shifting, this is what I was saying, if I am trying to shift this B along with this B, let, let me let me rebuild this B like that, right? So along with this B, the whole box will get shifted. Does it not? So, so let us exactly do that. Let, let us actually do that and, and kind of then you'll understand. So, so I have this and I start shifting this. Okay. So I shift this. Okay. You see it, it got shifted from here. So I'm not doing anything on my own and I try to align. Right. I try to align this, this purple vector with, with the head of this. Earlier I had drawn a vector here, right? So hold on, hold on. So I, earlier I had drawn a vector here, right? That was actually not exactly parallel and of the same length. So let me do away with that vector because that is kind of leading to some confusion. So, so this vector is not there, right? It's not there. And, and this resultant will now depend on where the head of the B vector will go. So this, this green vector is no longer there. You you find one interesting thing that, that this vector, hold on, this vector that is there, right? If I if I shift it and try to align it, it will exactly get aligned with this. You see that? With this original B vector. Why? Because they are the same, right? So what do I have to do? I shift this vector and, and put it like that. And put its head like that. Like that. Okay. D do we get the point? Do we get the point? So head like that. Now the vector, the the uh, and and I'll make it a bit thicker. Okay. The vector that you draw as the as the resultant of these two is this green vector. Do we see that? And what you want to know is the what is the x the length of the 
x coordinate okay what is the x component of it what is the x component of it you can very clearly see that the x component of the green one is the sum of see this is the length of this box ax this is the length of this box which is bx okay so the so the length of the x coordinate of the green vector is ax plus bx do we see that okay and what is the what is the length of the y coordinate it is see b it is a y length here okay it is a y length here and above that see where where this ended i have this box going above this do you see that this box the the green box is it its y axis its y axis is going above this right above where the y y coordinate of the of the uh, of this bigger box ended is it not this is above it so so what is the total y component you, you see Th this seems to be lower but but this plane is is this plane you see this plane of this box is is parallel to this plane right they are the same planes so this is over and above this length by that you ay that you got here there is ay here and above that there is by so the y component also is ay plus by and how about uh, about z it it came out here and then again further after after having come out here right here to this plane this plane and this plane are the same so it came out by az here and then further by bz okay so the so the z component also got added do we see that so analytically okay do we understand so i am i am kind of undoing this effect to to actually see the vector so so i saw i saw that that if you try to add this a and b i saw that if i want to add this a and b if i try to add this a and b then 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 this vector a this vector i'll, I'll make some more space okay then then we just said that vector a plus vector b has its x component just by the diagram of it we saw that its x component is nothing but but the <coughs> but the sum of the x components of the two vectors so it is something like that and the the sum of the y component is nothing but what is the y component of the resultant it is the sum of the y component of these two vectors and and what is the the z component that is nothing but the sum of the z component of the given vectors so what has in effect happened is is you need not have done all this okay we come to the conclusion that if you want to add these two vectors if you want to add these two vectors fine so what do you do if if you actually want to add these two vectors then then a plus b okay okay is equal to to what it is nothing but ax i cap plus plus ax i cap plus a y j cap plus a z k cap right plus b x i cap plus b y j cap plus b z k cap right and that gives me what i just collect the terms the coefficients of i cap together so so it is a x i cap this is b x i cap i do a x plus b x a y plus b y j cap right j cap j cap coefficients get added a z 
plus b z k cap coefficients get added and there is nothing but but the same what we got by the graphical method understand so what actually happens is if you are adding the vectors okay then then you simply sum up their respective coefficients and that is it what if you were subtracting these vectors what if you were to subtract these vectors say a minus b what would have happened you would have simply written it as a x i cap plus plus a y j cap plus a z k cap okay minus b x i cap plus b y j cap plus b z k cap okay and what happens this gives us i cap okay a x minus b x plus a y minus b y j cap plus a z minus b z k cap Understand? And not only that, what if you multiply a by m and b by n and add it? That again becomes very simple algebraic manipulation. A x i plus a y j cap plus a z k cap plus Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is equal to, right? This is equal to. This is equal to. Fine. This is equal to m times. This is my a vector plus n times the b vector. Now that makes it what? This is m a x, and this is n b x i cap, and similarly with all other terms m a y plus n b y j cap plus plus. M a z. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Plus m a z plus n b z k k a. Correct. So from the graphical, we 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 climb down to the analytical and find that the analytical thing is simpler than doing the graphical thing. And and henceforth we'll keep on. on the track of the analytical ways of adding the vectors or subtracting the vectors or maybe multiplying a vector by a scalar this is what i have multiplied vector a by a scalar m and b by n and then added them so all these are very readily possible when we follow the analytical method right